Hi guys, I'm back with my gloves donned because I'm going to be using some alcohol inks today. I'm going to make a faux turquoise. Um, I have done a faux turquoise before, I think. Yeah, I've done a spiny oyster one. Um, but this is a, um, a turquoise that I saw, then it had copper elements to it as well. So it's like a turquoise copper type piece. So we are going to go chippy choppy today. And what you're going to need is some translucent. I'm just using Primo White Translucent, but you can use any. You're going to need a little bit of white, and I've got Primo White, and a tiny, tiny bit of Primo Turquoise. Well, that's, that's the turquoise I'm using is Primo. Um, I'm also going to be using some alcohol inks. So I've, I'm using my Picassos again, guys, listed in my Amazon storefront. And this one is the blue-green one coffee um turquoise and i've got a couple of cernit ones here as well and this is the lagoon blue and this one is black um you can get your cernit inks from blueberry bees i've got them listed in in the description and in the pinned comment and that's where, where i get my clay from as well um the picassios are in my amazon storefront and I'm also going to be using some embossing powders. I've got the opaque bright white, again, listed in my Amazon. Um, metallic copper sparkle embossing powder, or embossing glitter, this is called. Um, that's in, did I say that's copper? That's copper. And then I've got this one as well, which is just silver embossing powder. Um, I don't think I've actually got this one listed, but it's just a silver embossing powder. And then some black embossing powder as well. Okay, so that's them. I'm just going to put all those to one side because we don't need that right at this moment in time. I'm going to grab my um, translucent clay, which I've not even opened yet, and I'm going to be using this whole block. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, about a half of a section-ish, not a great deal like that. And that's going to go over there to one side. And I'm going to take, um, let me think about this. I shouldn't have cut it in half. I've confused myself. Um, um, and I'm just going to cut one section. And that's going to be there. And then this can just be the last section, okay? All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the larger section, like so. I'm just going to give it a quick roll. Like that. And I'm going to do the same with the second biggest piece. No, I'm not. I'm going to leave that to one side. Change that, that was wrong. Ignore that bit. That's just going to be left there for now. I'm taking the smaller piece. And I'm just rolling that out just quickly. All right. And then I'm going to grab my alcohol inks. I'm going to get the blue green. The lagoon blue. And the turquoise. Now I'm doing this, guys, because I'm trying to get my own colour. A colour that I like. And well, you could just straight up use... Um, you know the turquoise that, that comes like this from primo i personally don't want it that kind of blue and i'm going off of one of the pieces that i saw so what i did was to get the color that i wanted was to mix these together but again you can just play around and get the color that you like so i'm going to go with the turquoise and with that i'm going to go one two three drops like that with the Lagoon Blue, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five drops. And then with the Blue Green, I'm just going to do one, one big, one biggish drop. And that's all I'm doing. And I'm just going to rub that all over the clay, let it dry. Like so. And that's going to give me the colour that I'm after. Which 
is closest to what I could get to the picture that I looked at that I liked and I'm trying to replicate. But again, it's turquoise, so turquoise comes in all different shades of turquoise, so you can just mess around with it. But that's what I'm doing. Okay, so there's that one. That's got to dry. And then with the smaller piece that I rolled out, I'm going to get the um, the coffee. And I'm just going to go one, two, three, four drops of that on there. Give that a smush or a smear. And again, that has to be left to dry. Okay, so I'm just going to put those over there to dry and we'll come back to those. <clears throat> While that's drying, and I'll probably have to go off camera for a little bit, to leave it to dry for longer but while that's doing its thing I'm going to take that last piece that I talked about and I'm going to cut it into little chunks so chippy choppy and like so I really love this technique because you know you can lend it to so many different faux stones and it's all about getting the colours right and how you put the chunks together when you've got them all, you know, ready to go and not just haphazardly throw them all together. So with this, I'm just going to break it up a little bit. It doesn't have to be completely broken up at this point. And I'm going to grab the coffee again, the coffee alcohol ink, and I'm just going to drizzle some of that on there like so and toss that up in that like this and again this needs to be left to dry so I'm going to go off camera let it dry and I'll be back but before I do that I'm going to add a little bit more of that ink to this just a little bit more I think <clears throat> so I'm just going to Chisel that over and toss it up in that again like that. And I'm going to leave it to dry. I might cut into it again once it's dry and mess around with it a little bit more, but that's all we're doing for now. All right, so I'm going to go off and let this dry for a little bit and I'll be back. Now that that's dry-ish... I mean, it's not 100%, but I'm impatient and I want to get moving. I'm going to take the bigger piece with the bluish alcohol inks on it. And I'm going to, um, oh, yeah, that's right. I'm going to add a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of white to this. Just to help tone down that green, if that makes sense, lighten it a little bit. So I'm literally taking a tiny corner like that tiny bit and I'm putting that on there and the same with the um, Primo turquoise again guys I messed around um, and this is what I did to get the colour that I liked so again just a little corner of the turquoise and plop that on there like so and that's all going to get mixed together thoroughly and before I do that, I'm just going to get some of the white embossing powder and sprinkle some of that on top. It's just random at this point. You're just, you know, doing that and then it's all going to get mixed together. All right, so I'm just going to press that embossing powder down on there. And I'm going to pass this through my pasta machine until it's all completely mixed. All right, so there's that. So that's going to go and get mixed. And then this one the copper one not the copper one the coffee one I'm going to get some of the um, metallic copper sparkle embossing glitter and I'm going to just throw a little bit of that on there as well like so and then that is also going to go through my pasta machine and get thoroughly mixed I'm just pressing it down a little bit just so it doesn't all fall off when I lift it Okay, so that's going to go and get mixed as well until it's thoroughly mixed together and I'll be back. I've mixed those um, colours into the clay then and I'm just going to take each one and just roll it into a log. Okay, 
I'll do that off camera because I don't want to make you dizzy. <laughs> so I'm just rolling that into a log, okay, like so. And then I'm going to cut it into three parts. <clears throat> now let me think about how I did it last time. I've done this like three, this is the third time I've done it now. And I just wanted to make sure I got it right. So um, this bit I'm going to cut here and that's not going to have anything done to it. It's just going to be left like that and chopped up. And then basically three equal parts, guys. And then this bit as well, the little tiny coffee stained um, clay with the copper embossing powder in it. It's going to get rolled up into a log as well. Okay, so once you've got your logs, let's start with this one first. I want this to be quite small pieces. So I'm just going to chop away at that and get it into small pieces. I've chopped it into small pieces, but it's going to need a little bit of help because they're all sticking together. And the reason I do this is when you've got pieces like this, you want to give them a little bit of an outline of something if you're doing a faux stone. And it also helps to separate the chunk so that each individual chunk can get that outline vein, so to speak, if that makes sense. And then obviously, once you put the block together, that's when you add the... Um, liquid clay to help join it all back together again but at this point you want to try and keep these little bits as separated as you can and add in some embossing powder or even mica powder in some instances i'm not using mica powder in this one but in some instances that helps to separate the chunks so that they get each little chunk gets a nice coating of that powder if that makes sense i hope i'm making sense somebody kind of made fun of me about that i don't think they quite understood the, understood the concept they were laughing at me it's like you separate it just to stick it back together again well yeah i do but there's a reason for that as explained all right so when you've coated that i'm just going to go back over and again this is also helping the pieces to separate now you've got that powder on there because the powder resists sticking. So I'm just gonna go even, even smaller with this. I'm just gonna keep doing that until I'm happy. And then when it starts to get mushy again like this, I'm just gonna throw in a little bit more of this embossing powder. And this is what gives the coppery sparkly look in the piece as well. All right, so I'm just tumbling that again, making sure those little pieces are coated. And I think I'm going to go even smaller. I'll chop a little bit more and I'll be back. I'll chop that as small as I want it to be. So that's that little pile. Don't forget we've also got this pile up here. And then we've got the three blues that need chopping as well. So I'm going to take one. I'm just going to wipe my finger, fingers off before I get any more embossing powder on that. Not that it would hurt it. And these pieces, I'm going to cut fairly chunky because the piece that I looked at, while it did have the veins and lines of separation, some of the pieces were very chunky. So I'm just going to leave that like that and that's going to stay as is. This one, I'm going to cut again into bigger pieces as before. So fairly chunky, guys. And then I'm going to grab the um, silver embossing powder for this. And I'm just going to throw a little bit of that on there like so. And I'm just going to toss those in the embossing powder. And like I say, chunky pieces. But I think I need a little bit more powder. So I'm just going to throw that on there. Give it another tumble. I want it nicely coated. Don't like that bit. I'm just going to give that a bit of a squash. It looks a bit weird. And I still think I need just a little bit more of this powder. So you just got to get it all coated, guys. So that's 
that little section as well. Get rid of the excess, brush my hands off and then grab the last piece. And again, fairly chunky pieces. You can go a little bit smaller with some of the pieces. Um, it's all on you how you want to do it really. But like I say, the, the piece that I saw, um, there was big chunks of turquoise before there was any kind of veins around it. All right, so, um, okay, yeah, this one, this is the last bit of blue. I'm going to grab the white embossing powder again for this one. And just dump that on there like so. So this is going to be coated in white embossing powder. And the reason I'm doing that is because the piece that I looked at, it also had almost looked like it had um, like sediment on it. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but it gave it a more rustic look and I really liked it. So that's what I'm going for. OK, so I faffed around with that for long enough. That's all those bits ready to go. But... I just want to go back and grab this pile that I did before. Now it's dry. I'm not going to add any embossing powder in this. I don't, well, I might have to because it is sticking a little bit. So I think I am going to just add a touch, just a little touch of the copper just to help separate those chunks a little bit, but I don't want it too glittery. And then I'm going to chop again, guys, just a little bit. Not as small as the other pile, but just a little bit more, okay? And then now I've done that, I'm gonna grab my black alcohol ink. No, I'm not, I'm gonna grab the black embossing powder. I almost forgot that, guys. If I can get it open. And I'm just gonna throw a little bit of that on there like so. and toss that in the black. Don't want a great deal. It's just again to give it a little bit of an outline around those chunks. And this stone had a few black outlines. It had a few white outlines. So that's why I'm doing all this. I hope it makes sense. Okay, so there's that. And then I've still got the black alcohol ink. And what I'm gonna do is grab that wipe my hands off a little bit grab the blue that I didn't put any embossing powder on and I'm just going to do a little drizzle of black ink on these bits because as you know turquoise often has black veins going around it okay so I'm just going to toss that in the black let it dry Get it as coated as I can. I might need to add a bit more, but make sure the pieces are coated, guys. I'll be okay, back. I've got all my pieces, my, all my chunks together, and all I need to do now is add the liquid clay. I don't know whether I mentioned that at the beginning, but you're going to need some liquid translucent clay. If I can open it, there we go. So I'm just going to do a little drizzle on each, and this is going to help it all stick back together again. So just a little bit on each pile, maybe a little bit more where there's a lot of embossing powder because that does resist sticking. And I'm just going to toss that smaller pile in the liquid clay, but I'm not clumping it together, guys. I'm going to try and keep it as separate as I can. I'm just adding the glue, so to speak. So that can go there, like so, wipe my fingers off. Um, then this one. Move that out of the way a little bit. And again, I'm not clumping anything together. I'm just coating them in the liquid clay so we've got some stick when we come to form the block. So there's that one. I'm wiping my hands again. And I'm just tossing this. Actually, guys, you know this? I think I might take these down a little bit smaller, to be fair. I feel like that's a little bit too chunky and I just realised and it really doesn't matter because turquoise does have the black lines in it but I didn't actually add black alcohol ink around these bigger chunks on my other pieces but no big deal, no worries. I just left it without anything on it but um, 
everything else is identical but these I didn't but you know it's going to give us some nice black veins can you see what I mean when you cut into it guys now you can see that because a lot of people don't quite understand what's going on I'm trying to explain when you coat a piece and then when you cut back into it and then when you put you slice through your block it's just going to show the lines like this which is what you want in a faux stone so I've just taken that down just a little bit in size and if you don't want to add the black clay to that bit, you don't have to. I didn't in my practice run. Um, I think what I did was added some black alcohol ink to that. But then in my second run, I didn't use the black alcohol ink. I just used the black embossing powder. And I've gotten a little bit um, jumbled up what I did in each one. But it's no biggie. It's still going to look almost the same. So, like I say, if you don't want to add the black on this bit, don't. Just do everything else as I did and then just leave that blue bit without the uh, the black ink. But I'm probably going to like it, so. Okay, I'm rambling. Let's grab this then and I'm coating these in the clay, liquid clay as well. But as you can see, I'm not clumping anything together at this point. I'm keeping it fairly separate because I like to place my components strategically rather than just going poop, throwing it all together. I might need a little bit more liquid clay, I don't know. Should be okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna get a little bit of this, the one with the silver embossing powder on it, and this is where we start piecing it all together now. And a little bit with the black alcohol ink on like so and then i'm going to grab the finely chopped pieces and i'm going to kind of stick that up against there but i'm keeping it putting it in the middle of the stone so we're going to have these little gold or coppery lines running through the middle of the stone and then i'm just going to put a little bit of that here and then i'm going to grab a decent chunk of the blue covered in the white embossing powder and put that there and then I'm going to get some more of the blue with the black on it and put that here just keep a few pieces to one side and I'm going to grab you can do this however you want but I'm just placing it how I want it to be when I slice into the block and I'm going to put a little bit of that there and I'm just going to chuck that there now. Perhaps won't need all of this. I might as well use it though, hey. And then I'll just put that little bit there. And this bit up here. And a little bit more of the coppery bits together. Like so. So place it how you want it to look when you slice into it. I've deliberately put these coppery bits because I want some to be in the middle of the stone and not just all around the edge and now it's just a case of squeezing it all together and forming it into a block so I'll do a little bit of, of that on camera so you can see what I'm doing I'm just turning it and pushing it on all sides to make a nice square all right so I'm going to keep on doing that and I'll be back I've got my block now it's all nicely stuck together. I've taken my gloves off because I can't stand actually working with them, guys. So they're probably going to get a bit dirty, but oh well. So I'm just going to turn my block on its side and I'm just going to take fairly decent sized slices. And then I can show you what it looks like on the inside. So can you see what I mean? I did these smaller bits and I've got the veins going around it, but then I've got these chunky bits with just a few veins going round. And that's that's the stone that I looked at. That's kind of what it was like. So that's why I did it that way. Let's take another slice. I think I'll do some earrings today instead of pendant, a pendant guys. I don't very often do earrings. Um, I will show you some of the other pieces that I've made though. So I'm just cutting these into slices, fairly thick. And then let's see what we can do with, let's go with this one to start with. Obviously I need some cutters. So I'm gonna go with these so you can get um, the mirror image of these cutters to make nice earrings. These are in Ojoy Creations shop, 
which I'll list in the description and the pinned comment. Guys, I don't list every single cutter individually. You're going to have to just go on and find them. Um, these aren't the, in the clay boutique section. Though. These are just in, in the general section. I've got my own section in there as well. Um, so, yeah, you're just going to have to go in and scroll through until you see what you want. I'm just going to roll this out. I'm pretty sure these are in the tribal section. I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but I think they are. The thing is, um, Joy just sends me stuff, so I don't necessarily know <laughs> where they're at or anything. I'm just like, oh, thank you. So I'm just going to roll this out, and because the back is a little inky still, I'm just going to get some rubbing alcohol and a wipe and just clean the back up a little bit. So, so you get the general idea of what it's looking like now as well. I'm just going to pat that dry a little bit before I turn it over, otherwise it will slide everywhere. Okay, so I'm going to roll this out. I'm just going to get my little measuring sticks and these are three millimetres thick. And again, you can get these from Ojoy Creations. And I'm just gonna roll this out so it's the same thickness as those sticks. Like so. And it's not sticking to the tile, but it's probably still wet. Let me just lift that and yeah, it's a bit wet there still. I suppose I could just get some paper. Hang on, guys, I could have some paper. It would help, wouldn't it? I'll just give that a quick burnish and that helps to dry it off as well. All right, but that's the back. So I'm going to turn it back this way. And I'm going to make some cute little earrings. So I'm going to try and incorporate every little bit of that if I can. So let's go there on that one and cut through and then the mirror image of that one and I'm going to go I'm just going to move, move this around a bit so I can incorporate all the elements so to speak and cut through that and there we go now you can always use your, your leftover pieces just kind of piece them back together roll them out and then you've got another little sheet to play with, okay? So, you know, something like that. Just make sure it's all stuck back together. And then you can roll it out, smooth it out and cut some more pieces. I'm not gonna do that. I just wanted to show you that you could do that. I've got a tile here. I'm just gonna gently lift these up and I'm baking these directly on a tile, like so. Put those to one side. Let's grab another chunk and roll it out again. Like so. And little measuring depth sticks, depth measuring sticks, whatever you call them. Roll that out. And I'm actually liking the black guys. Like I say, on, on one, one I did use black lines and on the second one I didn't and I wasn't going to want this one, but I went ahead and did anyway. I'm just going to give this a quick wipe. Like so. And I'm going to grab this cutter. Now, this isn't from Ojoy Creations. This is from Kaylee and Clay. And again, her shop is linked in the description and or pinned comment all right so i'm going to go with this one i might need to roll this one out a bit more though um boop -ba -doop. this is two millimeters that might be a bit too thin those are 2.5 millimeters 
think I'll go a little bit thinner on these ones if I can find the other stick. There it is. So I'm going down. Oh, no, that's a 2.5. Hang on. 2.5. 2. All right, so I'm going down to 2 millimetres on these ones. Just because this cutter has got that very tiny midsection and it can get a little tricky if the pieces if the clay is too thick so I just like to take it down just a fraction I mean it's hardly noticeable really guys but I'm just taking it down a little bit so it's easy for me to cut through um doo -doo. I'm just going to give this a quick wipe down with a wet wipe just to wet the edges to make sure it cuts all the way through especially in this little bit here so there's that and I'm just gonna go boop there give it a good wiggle make sure it goes all the way through and hopefully it's not going to lift up on me and I'm gonna go I'm going to go here on that one. Okay, so that's two pairs of earrings. That's all I'm going to show you on camera, guys, but you get the idea. I think they look really nice even before they're baked, to be fair. Looking rather good. I'm just going to gently lift these up. I'll make some more pieces with what I've got left over here, and obviously I'll show you some other pieces that I've already made. But there we go, two pairs of earrings. Okay, so I'm gonna go and bake those. I'm gonna bake them for an hour and I shall return. Alrighty guys, I've finished the pieces. Um, I'll show you what I've made. I'll just wipe my desk down again. All right, so this is the first set of earrings. Just resined front and back, simple little wire wrap with a, a bead attached and then looped at the top with some earring hooks and I've sanded and buffed the sides so they're nice and smooth. So there's those, that's them. And then um, I'm trying to remember which ones I did on camera. It doesn't really matter, they all look the same. So, and this is another pair of earrings that I did. I absolutely love this shape. And like I say, this shape is from Kaylee and Clay. She is based in England though, guys but I'm sure you could find something similar if you're in America and go to Ojoy's shop. Again, linked in the description. Both those shops are linked in the description and the pinned comment. So there's those. Oh, and I just did, um, I drilled a hole, um, put in a jump ring and then added one of these little tiny charm things, whatever they're called, spacer beads. And then um, these earring hooks, which again, they're listed in my Amazon as well. So there's those, and I absolutely love that shape. And I did another shape off camera. Again, um, it was a Kaylee and Clay. Let me just see if I can find it. Was it that one? No, not that one. I meant to leave it out, guys, and I put it away and didn't get it back out again. Is it this shape? Oh, do you know what? I don't know now. Anyway, <laughs> I'll just show you the earrings and you can see what shape they are. Again, they're Kaylee and Clay. And I just did a little simple wire wrap, added a, bead, a wooden bead with two of the bead caps and attached an earring hook, just simple. But I love that shape, I really do. All right, so you can find those if you're in England or if you can order from America if you want to, but I'm just saying that she's based in England and that's Kaylee and Clay. So that's those three pairs of earrings that I did. And these ones are Ojoy Creation, um, from the Ojoy Creation shop, those cutters. And then with this same shape that I did here, I just made one into a pendant because I, I cut it thicker, sanded and buffed the edges, resin front and back, simple little wire wrap again, hook on the end, loop on the end, jump ring, and then just a simple black cord on that one. I think I quite like the look of that, just simple. So there's that one too. And then I've got a ton more pieces that I made. Some of them aren't, this, like this one, for example, I just did a round one. You know I've got to do a round one with a donut hole. I haven't finished it. It's not resined or sanded on the edges on the back yet. Um, 
so there's that one love it love it and then again this one is also um kaylee and clay cutter and i've actually got that one that's the bigger one though she does them in different sizes guys but that's the bigger one this is the next one down again i haven't resined the backs or sanded the edges I've got to get around to doing that but there's that one and i love that shape as well and then i just did some more of the same just some little earrings i even did this shape which this shape is an ojoy creation shape just an elongated triangle again they come in different sizes i'm using the smaller ones for earrings and then last but not least just some more of that same shape again as earrings so i did i did quite a lot of pieces guys but um some finished some not but there we go that's all the pieces i love this i hope you love it too thank you for watching have a great weekend guys and i'll catch you later bye